Well, welcome, class. I want to also welcome Mr. Dyer's class to our lab today. We're going to be uh, doing uh, a our, basically your first lab using the SparkView. Uh, this lab I use a lot, um, primarily because it's a relatively simple lab, but it also allows us to introduce to you how to use the Spark system and uh, the over 70 uh, probeware or sensors that we have for this uh, for this particular piece of equipment. Uh, I think you'll um, find it relatively easy to use. And once you kind of learn what the tools are and have some practice, I think you guys are going to be well on your way of using it on, on an everyday basis. So let me first of all start with the tools here on this top um, this top bar. Over here, this picture of a house is where we go to the home page. So if you have gotten your data log and turned it on, it goes to the home page automatically. So you can build a page or open up one of the I don't know, 50 or 60 different labs that we have on the data logger. And then this is the navigation um, bar. And as you click that, it scrolls down to various pages within the lab that you're doing. Or if you'd rather, you can go page by page. This is what I would suggest that you do so that you don't miss important information. From the introduction to the challenge question to background material that's really essential to understanding the lab that you're doing, as well as some self-checks. So along the way, we'll ask you questions to see if you kind of with us still and allows you to kind of slow down the pace and understand what it is that this lab is trying to show you. And uh, here are some materials on safety and then how to set up. This is really a, a kind of a comprehensive type of lab because we want you to be successful. But also part of the problem is you like to skip steps. So if you have a long page, uh, you tend to skip steps. So we just give you a little uh, bit of instruction each and every page. And then, of course, then you'll collect some data. And there's other things as well. So let's go back to the title page. And then if we go over here, these little dots just tell us a little bit about the version of the operating system that's on the data logger. It tells us the languages you can convert it to if you need to. Uh, this is our kind of our network button. And one of the ways we can save our journals is by, just like a computer, file, a save, or save as... And we're going to be using the save as command so you won't save your data directly on the uh, data log, although you can do that. Um, it's kind of up to you and how you want to handle that. And, of course, it's up to your instructor. But most, most of the time, we're going to be saving on a USB uh, drive or thumb drive. And then uh, this allows us to actually see some of the pages and what they look like. So if you want to add captions or other things to it, you may. And then, of course, this picture right here is called the snapshot page. So if you take a picture, uh, let's say you want to save your data, you take a snapshot of it, and when you do that, it will allow you to um, save the, the information on your particular page. And then the other thing is, that other button up there has to do with, all right, what about, how do I use the, um, the data logger? So if you want to start an experiment or you want to set up, you want to, the, the data to start being recorded, you can use this as your user's guide, and of course, um, that's what that is. So let's go ahead and get started. And um, I just want you to listen and kind of watch because in just a moment you'll be doing it on your own. So I just want to walk you through it so you're familiar with it. So here's the first page. This uh, this is the journal page. Um, this journal page will just tell you what I just told you about the different icons and what they mean. Now, this is the, the thing that we're trying to do today. We're trying to, to look at, if I put an Alka-Seltzer in the fruit juice, is it endothermic or exothermic? And what's the difference between the two? And if you look on the bottom, basically this is what we're doing. We're going to, first of all, we're going to just put some juice uh, in a nice clear cup. Cup. We're going to drop an Alka-Seltzer in it. It's going to do its fizzy thing. And then it's going to get all foamy. And then it defoams after a time. And we're going to be recording the temperature of this to see if the temperature goes up or it goes down. Um, when we look at the background information, um, the different kind of reactions you're going to be seeing primarily in chemistry and biology, one of two uh, reactions, an exothermic or endothermic. The exothermic is chemical reactions that release heat to the surrounding environment. Those are exothermic. For instance, a burning match is a good example of that. As it burns up the bonds or as the bonds are being broken as, it, as it's uh, burnt in the match, it's releasing heat or the heat around its surroundings. So it would be considered a exothermic. Now, if you've ever had instant cold pack, you know that you have to kind of crush it and twist it, and it causes those chemicals to be released, and they start interacting. And when they do that, 
they actually absorb heat from the surrounding area so it feels and it is kind of cold to the touch that would be endothermic now reactions that cause an increase in the temperature are called exothermic is that true or false chemical reactions which cause an increase in temperature are called exothermic true or false so how what you would do is you'd put your answer in this box by clicking on it click on the the icon of the uh, keyboard and then put your answer you want to say true put true and then hit OK click OK and you have touch screens on all of your data loggers so you don't have to have a keyboard um, it, it, it really is um, a, a very good uh, touch screen but sometimes uh, you're gonna you're gonna have to maybe go click it again so uh, make sure that you kind of keep up with the piece of equipment that you have so you're going to take a snapshot of that so you can click on the camera and you'll notice that there's a little bitty picture of it so let's take a bigger picture and like a look and you can see it says true so I'm done there I know it's been um, the, the, the picture's been taken so now you go into the next page and there's all the materials for instance one of the things you're going to need is a fast response temperature probe and it looks like this and you can see that this particular jack goes into the front of your data logger this thing right here is kind of the probe end that is going to go into the juice and that's the thing that's going to record the temperature so that's a fast response temperature probe set that off to the side for a second you'll need an Alka-Seltzer tablet obviously you're going to need some juice not this particular juice but any juice that kind of acidic and then this one right here this is the cup and this is how much you fill the juice with just about a third of the cup so that's what we're going to be using today all right we filled the cup up with the one-third amount of fruit juice just like I did here we're going to now connect this end of your fast response temperature probe to the data logger that's what I'm doing right now and uh, we're going to connect the temperature probe to spark as we did and then we're going to put the place of the tip of this that temperature probe right into the juice I'm going to set it down for just a second all right now what we're going to do is I'm going to take a temperature reading but I want to take the temperature reading without the Alka-Seltzer first because I have to give a baseline so I'm going to run it let it run between 15 to 20 seconds so that um, we get a good baseline now understand that um, you, there's a clock right down the start button and you can see approximately how many seconds you uh, uh, have been going on so I'm going to drop this in right at 20 I got a good baseline number and I'm just going to drop it in right now and now it's fizzing now if you take a look at that you can see it's beginning to fizz a little bit not as much as I'd like to see it fizz but it's definitely fizzing and uh, we're going to be recording obviously the temperature and we're going to let that go. I'm going to set this off the side. And we're going to hit stop once it stops fizzing and bubbling. And depending on the kind of juice, if it's cold or if it's warm, it's going to give you a, a greater or, or lesser of a reaction, kind of depending on the temperature. And also the juice itself. Um, if, it's, if it's more neutral or neutralized, then it may not give as great a reaction. So we're going to be taking a look at this in just a moment. And it's really starting to fizz now. And I'll show you... This is what we got right here. And it's still fizzing away, and we're going to just let it continue going here. And every time I pick it up and put, and put it down, you're going to be probably a little anomaly onto the, um, onto the screen. But um, we need to just to make sure that we have it um, going pretty well before we stop it. The reaction is going extremely well now. I'm just hoping that the foam doesn't go over our cup right here. So um, it looks like it's starting to stop fizzing. And uh, let's see here. Yep, it stopped fizzing, so I'm going to hit stop. All right, that's good. I'm going to make sure it doesn't uh, go over on the desk here. Sorry about that. And now what you're going to be looking is, if you look at, the, at what I've got here, it doesn't look terribly... Um, I don't know, exciting. And you notice it's pretty much a straight line. Maybe it's dropped a little bit. But we have to scale it. If you notice right here, 
along the y-axis, you have 15 uh, uh, degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius. We're talking about temperature difference in the tenths of a degree. So that scaled way too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to click this blue button on the lower left, and that button is going to bring up a pile of tools. And one of the tools, you can see the icon of this graph, and then you'll also notice that it has arrows. And when I click, that's called the auto scale. When I click it, now you can see a huge difference because we're talking about tenths of a degree. Now we have quite a quite a bit different type of look. Now this particular one, yours probably isn't going to be quite as dramatic as this one. This one is definitely dramatic because of the kind of juice that I used, and I'll tell you about that a little bit later on. But some other things that you can do with this tool palette is it's going to ask you, for instance, um, to to make some um, calculations. So I'm going to go to the next page. I'm going to do the same thing. And there it, there it is again. But it asks you to find the maximum and minimums. So I'm going to hit the summation tool, tap on the summation tool. And I'm going to find the minimum. I'm going to click the minimum, the maximum, and the mean. And I'm going to press OK. And then there it shows you the maximum and the minimum. The maximum was 16 degrees Celsius and it went to 14.2 degrees Celsius with a mean of 15.6. So at this particular point, we're going to take a snapshot of it when I turn the palette off. And then I'm going to take a snapshot. So here it goes. As I take the snapshot, uh, you may want to take a look at the page so it's kind of what you want. And if you notice, it has a max minimum and a mean. So I'm going to press done. And when that happens, now I'm, I'm finished with that part. Now I'm going to go to the next stage. So we're going to take a look at the analysis. It says the temperature, did it increase or decrease by how many degrees Celsius? So the reaction is what? Exothermic or endothermic? You're going to take a snapshot of that. And then uh, the synthesis part, describe an everyday chemical you're familiar with, a chemical reaction you're familiar with, which involves a temperature change. Is it endothermic and exothermic? So you put your answer right here. Give it some thought. Lots of different kinds of common things, whether it be, you know, stoking the fire in the fireplace, uh, wh whether it is obviously putting Alka-Seltzer in water, what is it that's changing temperature? So that's how you set up the lab. Uh, I know that you're going to uh, find it not only a fun, but also relatively easy to do, but make sure you do all your calculations properly. Make sure you answer those questions. I hope you had a great time. You're going to get out your data loggers now, and Mr. Dyer and I will be circulating around to help you with your analysis and synthesis. So um, have a good lab, and we'll, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.